Hey guys, this is Evangelist Chris Michelson and you're watching Salvation Today. I've got a powerful program for you today. I'm going to be teaching out of the Word of God, out of Genesis, talking about Abraham and his son Isaac. I believe you're going to be greatly blessed, so sit back, relax, and enjoy the broadcast. my friends and welcome to Salvation Today. I'm your host evangelist Chris Michelson and uh, we have a wonderful show for you today uh, and we have a big surprise for you. We're coming to you live from our brand new studio here in our office and our headquarters in Orlando, Florida. Uh, the Lord has blessed us with this new office space and studio space and uh, you'll continue uh, for those of you that are watching online or on television, you'll continue to see the studio set evolve. This is just the beginning, but we are really excited to have you guys joining us today from our brand new studio. And the Lord has really given me a word for you today. I believe you're going to be incredibly blessed today by this word. I'm going to be teaching out of the book of Genesis on the story of Abraham and Isaac, his son, and the sacrifice that God asked Abraham to make. And I think you are just going to be incredibly blessed by this story today. I can't wait to uh, get into it. But before we do, you know, I want to encourage all of you who have sickness in your body to send in your prayer requests. And not just sickness prayer requests. If you have any kind of prayer request that you are believing God for or you are uh, distraught over some sort of thing, please send in your prayer request. We want to pray for you and we want to stand in the gap and pray and believe God for your miracle. You know, we believe God is a miracle working God. He is a healer. He can heal. He does heal. He can deliver. He can save. He can uh, pull you up out of the pit, whatever it is you're going through, God is here and He loves you and He can make a way where there seems to be no way in Jesus' name. I love uh, this scripture here. I just want to encourage you a minute before we get into the story of Abraham. Uh, out of the book of Psalms, chapter 103, there's a few verses here that are just so powerful as it relates to healing. And uh, we find here in verse 1 of Psalm 103, it says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of His benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all of your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who sacrifices, uh, who satisfies your mouth with good things. Somebody say good things. So that your youth is renewed as the eagles. My friends, God is a good God and He loves us and He cares about us. He cares about you. And the Bible says here in verse 2, Bless the Lord, O my soul, who for, uh, who for, and, and forget not all His benefits, who forgives all your iniquities. In other words, your sins. Who forgives all your sins and who heals all. Somebody say all. It doesn't say here some of your diseases. It doesn't say, you know, sometimes God will heal your disease. It doesn't say here that God will heal your diseases if you're a good enough person. Uh, you know, I hear people preaching that all of the time. My friends, it says in the Word of God that He is the one who heals all your diseases. Why? Because He paid the price for them already 
on the cross of Calvary. Turn with me to Isaiah chapter uh, 53. Isaiah 53, I love this passage of scripture. This is what we call the atonement, where Jesus, this is a prophecy that Isaiah gave regarding Jesus and how he would pay for the sins of the world and the sicknesses. Watch this. Isaiah 53 verse 4 says, Surely he, now this is a prophecy about the coming Messiah, that Jesus Christ was, is, and he fulfilled this prophecy. He says, Isaiah says, Surely he, Jesus, has bore our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. Jesus was wounded for us. He was nailed to a cross. He was pierced in his side with a spear. He was whipped and beaten. And it says here, he was wounded for our sins, our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities, our sins. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And watch this. And by his stripes we are healed. Not we might be healed. Not you will be healed if you're good enough. But it's by the stripes. What are the stripes? The whips that hit the back of Jesus, the stripes that he bore on his back for our sins also pays for our healing in Jesus' name. And it goes on to say in verse 6, we, all we like sheep having gone astray, having turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on Jesus, on him, the Messiah, the iniquity of of us all. My friends, God laid the sin of humanity on Jesus. He took your sins and He took your sicknesses on the cross as well. It's already paid for. Your sins are paid for. Your sicknesses are paid for. It's already done. And so today we are going to lay hold of that that healing by faith, whatever it is you're going through, where you lay hold of it today by faith in the one who bore your sin and your sicknesses when he died for you 2,000 years ago. And today we're going to believe God for your miracle in Jesus' name. So take down our contact information there. Uh, send us a prayer uh, request, any type of request that you have to our email at info at chrismichelson.com and uh, send us in those prayer requests so that we can pray for you and believe God for your miracle because at the end of this program, I'm going to begin to pray for all of those prayer requests and I believe God is going to touch you before the end of this program and heal you in Jesus' name. Amen? Well, amen. Well, my friends, uh, like I said, I'm really excited to talk to you today from the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 22. We have a beautiful uh, verse here, uh, a passage of scripture here about Father Abraham. He, we call him Father Abraham because he is the father of many nations, the Bible says that he would be the father of many nations. That was one of the prophecies over his life. And of course, we have seen that fulfillment. We are all, as a result, somehow descendants of this man. Many of us are descendants of Abraham, uh, and uh, he is the father, definitely, of many nations. Well, Abraham, as you might remember, I'm not going to read the whole passage here, but as you might remember... Abraham was a wonderful man. He had a wife that he loved very much, but she couldn't get pregnant. And she had finally at the very old age, in her old age, she had a son. She was even too old to bear ch children. But God spoke to 
her and said, You shall conceive and have a son. And she did. And she named him Isaac. And uh, now, maybe you're watching and you're not from a Christian background. Maybe you're from a different religion. Don't get confused about the name. It, the name here is not so important. We could debate and talk about, was it Isaac? Was it Ishmael? Listen, let's not even worry about that right now. I want you to hear the story because the story is the same regardless of the name. And I think you'll see the point that I'm trying to make at the end of this uh, message here on Abraham and his son. But this son, the Bible says, his name is Isaac. And God told Abraham to take this son. Now the son was already a teenager by this point in the story. And it was his only son. And God told him, take Isaac and take him up to the mountain of Moriah. Go to Moriah and go to a mountain there and sacrifice your son, your one and only son. Listen here, it says in verse 1 that God tested Abraham and said, uh, and it, uh, verse 2 it says, Then he, God said, Now take your son, your only son. Now that's important. It, this was his only son from this wife that he had. And he said, Take this son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on the mountains, which I shall tell you. So imagine this. Here is Abraham, and he's, he has this one son, and th he knows the prophecy that has been uh, unfulfilled for decades. It was unfulfilled in his life that he would be the father of many nations, yet he had no children. And finally, his wife gets pregnant with Isaac, and he has Isaac, and she doesn't have any more children. And he has this one child who is supposed to be the fulfillment of this great prophecy that he would be the father of many nations. And God now is telling I, uh, Abraham, Take your son, your one and only son, and take him and sacrifice him, kill him, and burn him as a burnt offering on the Mount of Moriah. And Abraham obeyed God. The Bible says in verse 1 that God was testing him. He was testing him. Will he obey me or will he obey his own desires? And Abraham was faithful. The Bible continues to go on here talking about how Abraham took his son and, and piled wood on to his son. And he took a torch of, of fire with them so that he could, he could start uh, a flame and start a fire once he arrived there. And they began to journey and journey and journey. And I love uh, this, this one particular spot where uh, Isaac says to his father Abraham, he says, Father, we have wood, we have fire for a, a sacrifice, and you and I are the only ones going to make a sacrifice, but where is the lamb? Where is the sacrifice? And Abraham replies in verse 8 and says, My son, God will provide for himself the lamb for the offering. Now, God has already told him to, to make the offering Isaac, that Isaac was to be the offering. But there was something inside of Abraham that knew either God is going to somehow save my son's life when I kill him and make this sacrifice, or somehow God is going to supernaturally intervene and provide a lamb or a ram or some sort of animal for the sacrifice. And Abraham is a man of faith. I love that. He's a man of faith. He says, God will provide something. He will provide it. And so they continued to journey. And the Bible goes on to say that they got there. And as 
Abraham had wrapped his son up and put him there on the altar to kill him, to sacrifice him to God. He brought up the knife or the axe, as some translations would say, and he was about to bring it down to kill his one and only son and an angel of the Lord. In verse 11, the Bible says here, the angel, the angel of the Lord who many believe was Jesus, uh, pre-incarnation, Jesus, the angel of the Lord, called from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. So he said, here I am. And he said, do not lay your hand on the lad, on the child, or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God since you have not withheld your only son, your one and only son from me. Wow, that's amazing. So God sent the angel of the Lord there and said, wait a minute, don't kill him. And then Abraham in verse 13 lifted up his eyes and looked and there behind him was a ram caught in the thicket by the horns. So Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. And Abraham called the name of that place, the Lord will provide. Now that's important. He called that place, that mountain top, that hilltop. He called it the the. the the Lord will provide. The Lord will provide. And he said, this day in the mount of the Lord, it shall be provided. Now, scholars believe that this very mount that Abraham was offering his son Isaac is the exact same Mount, the exact same hill that came 3,000 years later when Jesus Christ climbed to the top of Skull Hill. It's the Mount of Calvary, Golgotha, the Bible says. It is the same place, the same hill that Jesus carried the cross up the hill and was there on top of that mountain became the eternal sacrifice again. He, he, he was the eternal sacrifice, the one and only eternal sacrifice. And just as Abraham was offering his son on the altar, God offered his son on the same altar altar on the same mount where Abraham prophesied and said the Lord God Almighty will provide and he did provide he provided his one and only son Jesus Christ on that mount and the hand of the Lord this time the hand of the Lord came down Abraham's hand didn't come down on his son but God's hand came down and killed his son God allowed his son, his one and only son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross of Calvary on that same mount, and he was the eternal sacrifice for you. He paid with his blood to redeem your sins, just as Isaiah prophesied about how Jesus, about the Messiah, would take the, 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 the pain and, and, and he would take the stripes and he would take the piercing that would happen on the cross. Jesus Christ fulfilled it. And the Bible says in John 1.29 and again in verse 36, Behold, John the Baptist says, Behold the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, who takes away the sin 
of the world. My friends, Jesus was that lamb. He is the eternal lamb of God. And if you reject him, you are rejecting Father Abraham and what God did there. You're still rejecting the same thing because it was a picture, an eternal picture of what God would do in the future 3,000 years later when his only son, Jesus Christ, would come and pay that eternal sacrifice for you. My friends, God loves you so much that he would send his one and only son. In fact, the Bible says that he wouldn't send, he would give. That God so loved the world that he would give his one and only son, Jesus Christ. He gave him for you. He sacrificed his son for you. But my friends, he didn't just sacrifice him. He rose him on the third day. On the third day, Jesus Christ rose from the dead. And because he rose from the dead, you can rise from the dead. Because he died for your sins and rose from the dead, now your sins are paid for. They have been eternally wiped away. God will not see your sin anymore if you put your faith in Jesus Christ. And my friends, if you'll put your faith in him today, he will wash away your sin. But you've got to receive him. You've got to believe that he is the Messiah, that he is the Son of God, that he is the one that was the son in the story of Abraham and Isaac, that that, that was a foreshadowing of the Messiah, of the one to come. And Jesus Christ was that son who died for your sins. My friends, if you believe that, God will save you. He will save you from your sins. He will change you. In fact, He won't just change you. He'll replace you. The Bible says that He will put a new spirit within you and the old will be made new and the old will pass away and all things will become new, the Bible says. And so if you'll put your faith in Jesus today and repeat after me, I'm going to pray a prayer. And if you'll repeat this prayer after me and you'll pray with me, I believe and I know according to the word of God, you shall be saved. If you believe it, if you want to believe it, and you want Jesus to save you, you want him to forgive you of your sins, pray this prayer with me. Just close your eyes, lift your hands to heaven, and say, Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God, and you died for my sins. You are the only one who could make that sacrifice because you are the perfect and spotless Lamb of God. And I choose to believe you today. Forgive me of my sins. I put my faith in you. Save me now. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Wash me in your precious blood. From this day forward, I choose to follow you in jesus name i pray and everybody said amen amen my friends if you prayed that prayer let me tell you this is the most important decision you could ever make and i want to encourage you write to us and let us know that you prayed that prayer so that we can stand in prayer for you Uh, we're going to be Uh, going to a short break here right after the break I'm coming back to pray for your prayer requests and God is going to do miracles in your life stay tuned we'll be right back evangelist Chris Michelson is preaching the gospel in some of the most unreached and challenging countries around the world just last year their ministry saw 124,417 people come to faith in Christ near the Middle East and in the face of great danger Yet God has given Evangelist Michelson and his team divine strategy and divine protection to see such a great harvest. Now you can partner with the ministry of Evangelist Chris Michelson and help them reach one million people for Jesus Christ this year near the Middle East. The challenges in this part of the world are great, but as we change one heart at a time by sharing the gospel, 
God begins to change a nation, and then the entire world for His glory. Your monthly partnership of any amount will go directly into seeing thousands and even millions of people near the Middle East come to faith in Jesus Christ. Together with evangelist Chris Michelson and his team, you can change the world by bringing the gospel to the most unreached nations on the planet. All gifts are tax deductible and go directly to the soul winning nonprofit ministry of Chris Michelson Evangelistic Ministries. To become a monthly ministry partner, use the information on your screen to partner today. Your partnership in the harvest is needed now more than ever to see the nation saved. Welcome back, my friends. Uh, now listen, we want to get right to this and pray and believe God for your miracles. Uh, we have your prayer requests and we are going to pray for you today. And listen, when we get done praying, I want you to activate your faith and I want you to stand up. If you couldn't stand, I want you to stand. If you couldn't walk, I want you to get up and start walking. If you had a tumor, I want you to check and see that that tumor is disappearing. That tumor is vanishing before your eyes. Uh, it, it's vanishing in your hands or, or, or whatever the sickness is. I want you to test it. You have to activate your faith. You know, uh, when Peter met the man at the gate beautiful, he grabbed him and he lifted him up. He made him get up and start walking in Jesus name. And so we want to pray for you. And, uh, and you, when we get done, you just stand up. You do whatever you couldn't do before. You activate your faith. If you had pain in your back, you bend over and see that it's gone. If you had pain somewhere else, you check it, you move it and you see that God has healed you. So let's begin to uh, just pray. Just lift your hands to heaven. Um, put one hand on the body part that, that needs a miracle or just lift both hands to heaven and let's go to the Lord right now. Father, I thank you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you that you are the healer, that you can heal, that you do heal, and that you will heal these people in Jesus' name. Now, Lord, we pray every person who has written to us, every person who is watching or listening online, Lord, we pray right now in the name of Jesus, all sickness go in Jesus' name. Be healed right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you right now for touching them and healing them and delivering them. Chains be broken bodies be healed, lives be turned around and changed, situations be intervened by the power of the Holy Spirit right now in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you for it and we praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, my friends, that's all the time we have for today. We love you and God bless you and see you again next time on Salvation Today. Bye-bye. This program has been made possible by the friends and financial partners of Chris Michelson Evangelistic Ministries. To learn more about Chris Michelson Evangelistic Ministries, go to our website at chrismichelson.com or write to us at P.O. Box 771102, Orlando, Florida 32877. You can email us your prayer requests by sending them to info at chrismichelson.com. And don't forget to like us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash evangelist Chris Michelson.